In the previous videos for Chapter 4, I introduced script files, showed you how to create and run them, and talked about using comments to document your script files. In this video, I'll introduce some convenient touches you can include in your script files so that you can make them easier for other people to use. You can have your Octave program prompt the user to input a value from the keyboard while the program is running. The Octave command to do this is input. The syntax is here. The input command accepts a string. When the command is executed, this string is displayed in the command window and the program's execution stops and waits for the user to press the Enter key. While the program is paused, the user can type a response to the prompt that appeared in the command window. Once they've typed their response, press the Enter key. After the Enter key is pressed, Octave's input command reads the information the user typed. In this syntax, this value is then assigned to a variable named var. Now var is a defined variable and the program's execution continues. I'll use the script file to calculate beam deflection from a previous video to illustrate how this works. I'll use the same working directory that I used previously. This will give me easy access to my previous file. To set that as my working folder, I can use the cd command and specify the path to the folder. So I'll type cd c colon backslash tim backslash octave demos backslash chapter four. The file I created before was named beamdefl, so I'll edit it by typing edit beam DEFL. Now the file is ready for me to edit. I'll change my program to allow my user to input a value for x. My command will be x equals input open parentheses a single quote input a position in inches a closing single quote and close parentheses. Strings are defined by typing the desired character. Strings are defined by typing the desired characters inside single quotes. Now I save the file and then run it by typing the file name at the command prompt. The input command asks me for a position and waits until it receives an enter keystroke. I'll type 2 and press enter. The beam deflection at that position is displayed. Inputting data interactively can create some problems, however. Sometimes the user can make a typo and not realize it, so they'll get a wrong answer and no record of how it was created. Since once the octave session is closed, the value is lost. In order to make sure that my user retains a record of the workspace, I think I'll have my program save the workspace to a file. So I'll also prompt my user to input a file name where the workspace will be saved for future reference. I can use the input function to do this too. My command is going to be fname equals input open parentheses single quote type a file name to save the workspace close the single quote comma single quote s and close that single quote and then close the parentheses. The s in single quotes is an option that tells the input command that the user input is to be treated as a string. Alternately, you could provide your user instructions that they should put the file name in single quotes when they type it. But remember that the goal here is to make using your program easier for them. Next, I'll use the save command to save the file by typing save of fname. This saves the entire contents of the workspace to a file on disk. This might be overkill for what we want, but at least it ensures that the user has a record of their work. If you did want to save only the variables associated with this analysis, you could list the variables to save in the command. If I were doing this for real, I'd probably save w, e, i, l, x, and y to the file. Now I'll save the file and run it. I'll input x equals 5 
and set the file name to my file. The file gets saved to the current working directory with the name that I specified. I can see this in the current folder window. I can see this in the current folder window or by typing ls at the command prompt. I can check the contents of the file by clearing the variables from the workspace. Check the contents of the workspace with the who command. All my variables are gone. And then loading the file with the load command by typing load space my file and pressing enter. I can check that by typing who to check if my variables are back, which they are. You can also customize how you display your results in your script file. There are a few different ways to do this. First, I'll show you the easiest way using the disp command. To use the disp command, just type the function name, disp, and then what you want to display in parentheses, either a string or a number. The value will be displayed in the command window. The argument to the disp function can be either a string or a number. Numbers, of course, are usually referenced by their variable names. Sadly, you can't mix strings and numbers in a single disp argument. But you can get around that problem by combining multiple strings into a single string. There are two easy ways to do this. Just put a list of the strings within square brackets or use the strcat command with a list of the strings as an argument to the command. In either case, the strings get combined in the order they're listed, so the final string will start with string 1, the next part of the result will be string 2, and so on. This trick, along with another MATLAB command, allows us to display both strings and numbers in the same DISP command. You can convert a string to a number with the num2str command. This command accepts a number as an input and returns a string that looks like that number. So if we have a variable named var, which happens to be, say, 3, and we type the command num to string of var, we get back a string that looks like a 3. So this command can be substituted among these strings using this syntax. This whole string can then be used as an argument to the disp command. Let's take a look at how this works with the example script file we used in our last demonstration. First, I'll add a semicolon to the calculation of the displacement to suppress Octave's default method of displaying the results. Now I'll add a disp command or two to display the results. I could do this in several different commands by typing disp open parentheses, single quote, the calculated displacement is, close the single quote, close the parentheses, next, disp of y, and finally, disp, open parentheses, single quote, inches, single quote, close parentheses. Now save the file and run it. I get a descriptive message and the value we want. This lacks a certain something, though, so I'll put this information all on one line. I'll modify my previous command to be disp, open parentheses, and open square bracket, single quote, the calculated displacement is, close the single quote to end that string, a comma, the command num to string, num, the number 2, and str, open parentheses, y, close parentheses, that converts the value of y to a string, comma, a single quote, inches, close that single quote to give me my units, close the square brackets, and close the parentheses that provide the argument to the disk command. Now save the file and rerun the command. I think that's better, since it's easier to match values to their descriptions, since your user doesn't have to know what variable name you use to represent the displacement. Finally, if you have a lot of numbers that you want to display in an organized way, like a table, you can use formatted output. 
The command I'll use here is fprintf. Its arguments are a code to provide the format of the items being displayed and a list of the items to display. The code always starts with a percent sign. It can be followed by a conversion code, field width, precision, control characters, and some other generally optional codes and flags. Now I'll talk just a little bit more about the codes that can be put in these places. The conversion codes provide the basic type of information being displayed. For example, the code I is used for signed integers. F is used for fixed point values. There are plenty of other codes. U is for unsigned integers, E is for exponential notation, and so on. We can also specify the field width and precision. The field width specifies the total number of characters being displayed, and the precision specifies the number of digits to the right of the decimal place. For example, the number 12.5 here results in 12 digits being displayed, with 5 to the right of the decimal place. Keep in mind that one character is used for the decimal place itself, so there are actually six digits to the left of the decimal place. This code goes between the percent sign and the conversion character. Another common code to include is a control character. These controls adjust the display and are also used to display special characters. For example, one special character is a percent sign. Since a percent is used as part of the command, we need a special way to actually display a percent sign. Examples of control characters are slash t for a tab and slash n for a new line. I've only shown enough of the available options here so that I can do a demonstration using MATLAB. There's a slightly more complete but still limited list of codes in the text material for the course. The MATLAB documentation, of course, gives you a comprehensive list. Suppose I want to display all of the values used by my Beam DEFL program after the code runs. Using Octave's default display or the display command will get sort of awkward since a lot of material will scroll past with more white space than is really necessary. In this example, I'll show how the fprintf command might be used to improve things. First, I'll get rid of my old disp command. I'll also delete the save command since I don't like typing in a file name. I'll replace those with two fprintf commands. The first command will put some labels on the screen so that my user can tell which number corresponds to which variable. My labels are going to consist of only one character, but I'm going to reserve space for seven characters in each label. This is because I'm going to use seven digits to display each of the numbers. So also using seven characters for the labels will line them up with the numbers below them. The labels will be strings, which have a conversion code of S. So I type fprintf, open parentheses, a single quote to define a string. Each of the labels will use the same format, so I'll use a backslash t percent 7 s six times for the six different labels, and then a slash n to get to a new line. Close the single quote. A comma and a list of the labels that I want. These will be as strings, so place each of them in single quotes. E, I, L, W, X and Y. Next I'll print out the associated numbers. Use the fprintf command, open parentheses, single quote, backslash t percent 7.2 e, backslash t percent 7.3 f, backslash t percent 7.2 f, backslash t percent 7.2 f backslash t percent 7.2 f backslash t percent 7.5 f backslash n close the single quotes and then list the values that I want to display e i l w x and y 
Note that I'm using exponential notation for e, three decimal places for i, two decimal places for l, two decimal places for x, and five decimal places for y, since y will be a small number. Now I'll save the file again and run it. I get a nice little table displaying my values instead of just showing the variable names. In the next few videos, I'm going to introduce arrays and array operations, and we'll start to use octave as it is really intended to be used. Engineers use lots of numbers. Arrays are organized collections of numbers, so it's natural to set up many engineering problems in terms of arrays.